In today's video, I'm be answering the age old question topic of discussion that people always ask when they're self publishing books, which is should I choose a pen name? Should I use my own name or should I use a brand name? So in this video, I'm be going over exactly how to choose them, what they are, what makes them different and which one to choose that suits you best. What is going on guys? Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Dane and on this channel, I talk all about self publishing books on Amazon all on entrepreneurship and just lifestyle in general. So if that kind of thing interests you, make sure you subscribe, drop a like on the video and hit the notification bell so you know when I post new videos. In today's video, I'm just showing you exactly what the difference is between a pen name, using your actual name or using even a brand name for your self-published books. I'll be showing you what the advantages are, what the disadvantages are and hopefully helping you decide better which one best suits your situation for your self-published books. Okay. And I know this is a discussion that a lot of people have. They are a self a conflict of interest for a lot of people. They don't know what to do when it comes to, when it comes to self publishing your first book, should I use a pen name? Should I use my own name? So I wanted to answer this question in today's video because I get the question a lot. A lot of people have an issue with whether or not I should use a pen name or not. So I'll be breaking down what the advantages are of each and hopefully it'll make things a lot easier for you. And if I end up missing anything, make sure you leave down in the comments down below what I missed. All right. So anyways, let's jump into my computer and I'll walk you through exactly what I think are the main takeaways and the main advantages of each of the three pen name, actual name, brand name. So show my computer. I'll show you exactly what I got here. Okay. So we're in my computer here now. And as you can see, we're gonna talk about pen names first, pseudonyms, nom de plume, whatever you want to call them. Right. I'm just gonna talk about pen name or author name, whatever. This is the, this is when you don't use your own personal name, you use a different name. Okay. So JK Rowling being an example. Okay. And your name's Joan on her books. She uses JK Rowling, Rowling, whatever. Okay. That's what she uses on her books. It's a pen name. It's something that's not her actual name. It's kind of, a, it's not, it's not like a full on pen name. It's not completely different but it is not her actual name. So I'm going to consider it a pen name. That's just an example though. Okay. So for pen names, the main advantages of pen names, it allows for privacy and this is pretty self-explanatory, but if you're looking to publish a book and you don't want your actual name on it and you're trying to, I don't know if you're trying to hide it from someone, you're trying to hide it from your boss, whatever it may be, if you're trying to just have your own, like a second identity for your books, and it's just something that you want to have to allow for privacy for your own personal name, Choosing a pen name is a great option. There's also some cases where it might be easier to remember the pen name that you come up with compared to your actual name. Your actual name might be super long, have a bunch of characters in it, a bunch of syllables. It might just be really hard to remember it. So if you want to make it easier on your reader uh, for terms of like branding and just in terms of keeping your your pen name in the back of that person's head for the next book that they choose, it might be easier to use a pen name or a shortened version of your own name rather than your actual name. And this is obviously very circumstantial depending on what your actual name is and if it's hard to read out. Okay. And to, to get an idea, you might want to ask a few of your friends just so it's not you just picking whether or not it's, Hey, my name's hard to say. If you ask a couple of your friends, like, yeah, your, your name is definitely hard to remember, hard to say. It might secure the fact that you should maybe use a pen name or a different version of your actual name. Another thing, and I hate to say it, but it is something that is uh, unfortunately involved in art in today's world that it's getting better. But for certain niches, certain genres, it can be an advantage to use the gender specific pen name that a lot of the top sellers are using. So you'll be surprised that a lot of the top selling books within a genre or a niche are actually using pen names. And the writer of that book might be a female, even though the author, the pen name is clearly a male. Okay. And for that particular niche, males might be dominating in terms of getting sales. Okay. So it might just be something in terms of marketing and getting more royalties for your book, earning more money from it, choosing a gender specific pen name to, uh, correlate with the niche or genre that you're in might be something that's to your advantage. And this can go both ways. Sometimes female pen names dominate a certain niche and it's just like, it would look very weird to have a male pen name on that book, even though you're a male and you're writing the book, the niche that you're getting into might be female pen name dominated. So it might be worth it to use a female pen name. Another great advantage of using a pen name is it gives you the freedom to switch between different genres, different niches. If you want to, if you use your own name, for example, it's hard to write a book about, say, if you're doing nonfiction about gardening and then go over here and write a book about like math for beginners. Okay. There's a big conflict of interest there. And it kind of looks weird if your name is on a, it's scattered amongst a bunch of different niches. And it's like, what expert is this guy? Cause there's just so many niches with your own name on it. So with a pen name, you can use different pen names per niche, which is a very big advantage in my opinion. And it's something that I've utilized in the past. It just paints the picture to the reader that you're not focused on like hundreds of different niches. And I'm not saying go and focus on hundreds of different niches. 
I'm just saying, if you have like four different niches that you want to write books about, that's fine, but it might look a little bit weird if you have your own pen name or your own name on all of those books. So it's nice to have a pen name maybe per maybe two niches or for each niche individually. Finally, this is just a simple one, but your real name might be too generic or already in use. Like if your name is John Smith, it's going to be a little bit difficult. <laughs> like I would just suggest if your name is John Smith, it might be hard. Um, if someone's maybe goes on Amazon, they're looking for your book specifically and they search up John Smith, there's going to be hundreds of those names, all right, just to be real with you. So it might be worth it for you to switch things up and use a pen name that's a lot more easily recognizable and stands out from other pen names, all right? So that, and that goes for if you're going to pick a pen name, don't pick a pen name that is clearly a name that's super popular and that everyone's searching, okay? Make it original, make it uh, specific to the book or the niche that you're going to focus on so that people can find it if they search it in the search bar. Moving into actual name, all right? So we talked about pen names. So if you're going to, if, if you're leaning on the fence towards a pen name, um, that's, those are the main reasons that I would suggest using a pen name. Now let's get into actual name. So one thing about using your own name for your, your book to put, like, for example, if I use Dane Macbeth on a book, which I don't really do, I usually use pen names. But if I were to do that, it allows for easy, easier publicity and branding. Okay. And you can do this with a pen name, no problem. But if you're someone who's just getting started, it is something that is a challenge. If you're not going to use your own personal name on the book, uh, building a personal brand is going to be very difficult, obviously, because the name that's on your book isn't associated with your actual name. It also makes it a little bit easier to promote books in the beginning, especially if you don't have a list. Um, if you're going to use your own name on a book, it's a lot easier to promote it on like your own social media, your own Facebook page. Okay. And lots of people who use pen names promote their own books on their own pages anyways. But this is something to consider if you don't plan on doing that with your pen name, you want to keep it super private. It's going to be a little bit more difficult because you can't promote it on your own social pages where there already are people. You're going to have to do organic outreach methods that'll take a little bit more time. Another advantage of using your own name is it might just simply be more recognizable to people if you have, say, a following on social media. And this kind of ties into the brand building thing. If you already have a following and you're going to publish a book under your own name, it's going to be very easy to promote that and get some social proof in the beginning once your book goes live so it gets off to a roll and you start getting sales. With a pen name, it might be a little more difficult explaining to the people that already follow you why you're using a pen name, whose book is this, why are you promoting a book that's not yours, stuff like that. And one other thing is just purely psychological, but when people use a pen name, they find it a little bit more difficult to write the book in their own voice because they're trying to maybe hide or something like that from it being their own book, so they want to write differently. When you're using your own name, it gives you a lot more confidence to just write freely and create your own book. Even if you're working with a ghostwriter, creating an outline for a ghostwriter, it gives you a lot more freedom to just be uh, very true to yourself, I guess, when you're writing that outline. Um, this is just something that's purely psychological. It's not like anything important, really, but it is a barrier that some people have to get over, and I have it on here for that very reason. Finally, on the contrast to what I said last time, where it's nice to have a pen name where you can go amongst different niches, using your own name forces you to stick within maybe one to two niches, which in my opinion is a good thing because it lets you focus on one to two niches and not get super scatterbrained and focus on like tons of different niches and lose your focus. That means that the two niches that you focus on or the one niche that you focus on is going to be super high quality because you're putting all of your effort, all of your time into that. So that is an advantage of using your own name because it does limit you to only going into like two, maybe three different niches. When you get above that, it looks a little weird but it also makes it so you stay within those niches and you put all of your time and effort into them. So that is an advantage in my opinion. Finally, let's talk about brand names. Okay. And brand names are probably the least popular of the three. And sometimes a brand name is associated with a pen name. Okay. Don't get me wrong. You know, some people don't use a pen name or a brand name for their author name on Amazon. They'll have the brand name and then for that brand, this pen name is writing the book. Okay. An example of that would be like National Geographic. All their books are branded National Geographic, but they have different authors for each of the books, if that makes sense. So like I said here, it's good for certain situations. An example could be like a kid's book niche that you're getting into. It's a great example because having a brand within a kid's book niche is a great way to do it because kid's books are a lot shorter, a lot easier to make series out of. And we can tack one big brand name onto all those series, and maybe have an author writing the books. It makes things a lot more easy to keep track of and keep organized. Another thing is like, for example, if you're in the kid's niche, Having an adult name for your pen name might sound a little off, okay? And sometimes people will use pen names that are like animals and stuff for, for kids' books, so that's a funny way to do it. Or you could simply just use a brand name and kind of cover all your bases with it. It's a little bit simpler in my opinion. And again, brand names are a little bit more specific, so it depends on what you're getting into. And kind of like what I mentioned before, it's easier to pool books together. You put them all under one umbrella, one brand name umbrella. So I'm saying here, like create a series out of a bunch of books and this works great with kids books. Uh, another, another niche that I see people doing it is in with like language books. They have a bunch of language books. They don't really have a pen name. They just use a total, uh, an overarching brand name for all of the books. And again, this looks a lot more professional in some cases. 
all right? And in some cases, it does not fit. Like with a self-help book, in my opinion, having a brand name looks a little weird. It's more, it's better suited to have a pen name. So you gotta use your own discretion here, but for some different niches, using a brand name might make a lot more sense. And like I mentioned in the beginning, last thing here, using a brand name usually, not all the time, but usually involves having a pen name or an author name or your own name writing for that brand, if that makes sense. And that could be the publishing house as well, not just the brand name, but some people will associate with that kind of thing. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Okay guys, so that is pen name versus actual name versus brand name. Hopefully that cleared things up for you and hopefully it makes it a little bit easier to finalize your decision if you're on the fence between all of them right now and you don't know what to go with. Hopefully that reasoning that I gave to you makes things a little bit more clear. Um, personally, for a lot of my books, I use pen names associated with a brand name. That's kind of been my approach when it, came, it comes to self-publishing and I exclusively have published in non-fiction niches. Um, with fiction niches, it might just be a pen name that you use or your own name. In non-fiction, a lot of people go with just their own name. They don't use a brand name or pen name, they just use their own name. So there are different situations that's totally dependent on your own preferences. But anyways, guys, if you're brand new to self-publishing, I do wanna mention I have a 100% free self-publishing Facebook community. In the screenshot, you see it says 2,500 members. It actually has close to 6,000 people in it now, and it's super active, super supportive. So if you're looking to get into self-publishing and you wanna ask any questions or anything like that, this is the group to join to ask any self-publishing questions. Maybe it's audiobooks, publishing, paperback books, eBooks, whatever it may be. I'm active in there. There's tons of expert publishers in there who will also answer your questions that you post. And one other thing, when you join the group, there is tacked to the very top of the group, a five-step guide to get starting with self-publishing if you're brand new. I made it for you, it's 100% free, so if you wanna join that group, it's in there, and I'll see you in the group. Anyways, guys, that's it for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you subscribe, drop a like on the video, and hit the notification bell so you know when I post new videos. I try to post new videos every single week about self-publishing, online entrepreneurship, and just lifestyle content. So if that interests you, make sure you subscribe. Anyways, guys, that's it for today's video and I will see you in the next one. Peace.